In order to analyze the amount of force that the egg felt when it collided in your device with the ground, we can use Logger Pro video analysis. So to walk you through that process, um, I'll just kind of explain how we use the program and the slight adjustments we have to make since we film the videos in uh, slow motion or high speed. So the first thing you want to do is you want to click insert up top and go to movie. Then you'll have to find your movie. Uh, so make sure I recommend you save it to the desktop or somewhere um, that you know to find it. And your video should pop up within Logger Pro. Now the first thing we have to do is we have to make sure we change what's called the frame rate because this is in slow motion and Logger Pro is going to interpret the actual uh, motion as in real time. So if I kind of play this video here, you see it's obviously falling in slow motion. We need to tell Logger Pro that that is not real time. Uh, otherwise it'll think that that's traveling very slowly when it crashes into the ground. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is double click anywhere on the video and this kind of movie options will pop up. We need to scroll down to override frame rate, 30 frames roughly per second FPS. That is kind of normal speed. So we need to change this. Um, cell phones nowadays pretty much film in 240 frames per second for slow motion. So if we set that in and hit OK, it's going to adjust kind of the frame rate. So now it knows that this is a slow motion video. The next thing you want to do is you want to get the egg uh, as close as possible to the ground without touching it. Um, if you kind of start from when it's all the way up here, you're just going to be clicking a thousand times. So make sure it's not on the ground, but make sure it's fairly close. Something like that works. Then we're going to click on the button in the bottom right hand corner to get our tools. And from the fourth button up, we're going to go to the four, three, two rule. So we're going to look at the fourth button down. We're going to highlight, uh, in, in our case, I believe we probably used a ruler. A ruler is about 0.3 meters. So just highlight the ruler, enter 0.3 meters, and hit OK. Then we're going to go to the third button. The third button is what gives us uh, the ability to set the axis. We're going to set the center of our egg at this point as our origin. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to click the second point. And as accurately as possible, we're going to try and click the center of the egg. It's going to move everything forward one frame. We're going to go ahead and we're going to continue to click on where the center of that egg appears to be. We're going to track it all the way through the collision. So you can see my egg is kind of stopping for a moment as it's been brought to rest. But this is going to bounce back up. So I'm going to follow it through that bounce. And once the device leaves the ground and it's in the air again, which I'm pretty sure is somewhere around here, that's fine. If your egg kind of falls back down and bounces a few times, we only need that first initial bounce. Um, so we're done analyzing the video portion. We're going to look at the graph. One thing I suggest is uh, all of this stuff, like this green line and these blue dots, for some reason they won't go away and you'll see them through your graph. Uh, just click these three buttons on the side just to shut everything off so that when you choose your graph, you see nothing but the data. Uh, so now that I have my data on here, we don't want to look at the position time graph, so we're going to come over here where the x, y values are. Uh, we're going to click on those and choose y velocity. We want to see what the y velocity for this um, device is. If you've done it fairly accurately, you should see some kind of curve which looks a little bit like an S, something along these lines. It may look a little bit different, but you should see a general kind of grouping of points uh, down here in the negatives. It jumps up, crosses the x-axis, and then a grouping of points in the positive. So what we need to do is there's three pieces of information we need to get from uh, this data. So those two those three data points are the initial velocity, what velocity was it traveling at before it struck the ground, how much time did it take during the collision, which is this phase here when the velocity is flipping from negative to positive, and then what was the kind of final velocity it left the ground, which, uh, ground with, which is this grouping of points here. So for the velocities, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. So what I can do is I can actually mouse over. If I look at these groups, if I drew a straight line between these, it looks like it would be maybe somewhere about here. So you can look in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, it's going to be down here. So you can see I get about negative 6.27. So that tells me that this drop, this egg drop device hit the ground at roughly negative 6.27 meters per second. So what I can do is uh, I believe this was a 2-meter drop off the top of my head. So I'm going to come in here, and for the velocity prior to the collision, uh, it lets me type negative 6.27. All right, so that's the velocity that it was traveling at just before it hit the This is during the collision. I take a look at, you know, roughly, if I drew a straight line, maybe somewhere here. So again, I look at the bottom corner, and I see about 3.03. It's number down here. So about 3.03-ish. So I'll go back to my document. And afterwards, it was a positive 3.03 uh, because it was traveling upwards. It bounced. 
All right, now the mass of the egg you'll have to find using the, uh, the triple beam balance. They're usually about 60 grams, which is 0 0.06 kilograms. Time. So the way you can find the time of the collision is we find what the velocity was just before colliding, the velocity afterwards, and we're really looking at how long did it take for this velocity here in the middle to change. So I'm going to kind of highlight, click and drag to the best of my ability, that period of time over which the velocity was changing. So you can see here I've highlighted when the velocity is kind of going from negative to positive. If I do that and I come down here, I can see my change in time. So my change in time is about uh, 0 0.029. So I'll come back into my document and I'll put 0 0.029 over here for the time of collision. 0 0.029 seconds. All right, now we're trying to eventually figure out the average force experienced by the egg and then compare it to a value of 25 newtons. 25 newtons or more than 25 will break an egg, less than 25 will not. So now the rest of this I can just calculate um, fairly simply the momentum of the egg prior to the collision. Well, momentum is mass times velocity. So to get the momentum prior to the collision, I'm going to take the mass of the egg and I'm going to multiply it by the velocity prior to the collision.